Hey folks, this paper came out a few days ago and we went over it in the morning news, but descriptions sometimes aren't as good as visualizations, so we're going to try and deliver that to you here. The paper described the spikes in cosmic rays during geomagnetic excursions. They only studied three of them, but it was enough to confirm what we have been suggesting for a while. The space radiation is going to surge when the magnetic poles flip. To begin this visualization, let's look at one of the most commonly used data sets for cosmic rays, and almost every one shows something similar to this. What you're seeing is the 11-year sunspot modulation of the incoming cosmic radiation, and indeed, tends to go up and down like this over the sunspot cycle. While this isn't much variation, it is still more than enough that it has been repeatedly shown to have impacts on clouds, temperature, storms, volcanoes, and lightning. Now, to visualize what we now know about cosmic ray surges during a pole shift, let's look at this image and imagine the chart goes much higher. This is where the average geomagnetic excursion would take us. If the little variations on the chart are enough to noticeably impact so many weather phenomena, imagine what this will do. To further elucidate this drastic change, let's look at what happened during Le Champ, the worst event of the last 100,000 years. Folks, we're talking about a major shift in the radiation environment of Earth that hasn't been seen in thousands of years, and it's going to come to reality in the next few years to maybe up to two decades at the most. In our textbook, we compiled all of the data on this. This is just the papers on lightning forcing by cosmic rays, and it is significant. So, with Earth's magnetic field shifting now, it's no surprise that many lightning records have fallen in the last five years. You can get the textbook, by the way, at the link below the video in the description box. The reason cosmic rays trigger lightning is because of their electrification impact on the atmosphere. The ambient electricity amplification also helps water stick to dust, which is why it impacts clouds and storms overall. But the radiation electrification itself is directly tied to lightning strikes. Just one cosmic ray breaks out into hundreds of secondary particles in the cascade, and a cosmic ray strikes every square inch of the upper atmosphere every second right now. There are thousands, if not millions, of these breakout particles all around you, and even going through you. The impact of such a drastic elevation of cosmic rays and atmospheric electrification is profound. We're not just talking about normal lightning storms. We're talking superbolts and levels of lightning discharge rates unlike anything anyone has ever seen, beyond what many of us could even imagine. Of course, this radiation is also what will be destroying the ozone at the same time, as we mentioned, providing that direct radiation impact to the biological life on Earth. The solar protons should be expected to increase as well, with about a doubling of penetration counts, which will have a primary impact on that ozone level, and that, of course, will further enhance the cascade breakouts that reach the surface. There are a lot of elements to worry about in this ongoing geomagnetic shift, but the space radiation is a major one, if not the most major. It's what has been most tied to species extinction, weather shifts, and it will bring the kind of lightning that made our ancestors blame the gods for the sights in the sky. I will see you in the morning for the Daily Show. Be safe, everyone.